Hello. So, uh, someone needed help animating this latch model here. So let's look at what we got. We got the uh, latch bottom two, latch bottom one. We got the pivot bar here, and we got pin two and oh, I'm sorry, pin one and pin two, and then this top latch. Okay, so the way it was explained, uh, you kind of press down on this, which releases the tension here, so this will pop up, and then you can lift this up and release the latch, right? Makes sense. And so let's see my solution. All right, simple enough. Um, the uh, gentleman explained that this, you know, gets pressed down, it deforms, obviously it's not perfectly rigid. So that tells me shape keys, right? I gotta use shape keys. So I spent time, made a couple shape keys, and then I redid it, because I'm I, so long I've used shape keys, relative versus not relative, and so the easiest way is one shape key per object, so figure that out and okay just one shape key and then I remembered oh shape keys do them last because you just gonna mess everything up when you don't do them last so so I ended up just throwing the whole shape keys away and then animating the the actual pivots and stuff first so let me just hide this and bring this one doesn't have a shape key um, so I had to just look at the problem and think, okay, press this down. It's going to cause this to pivot up a bit, right? So it's going to rotate around that, but this isn't going to rotate up. It's just going to, you know, edge up a bit while this kind of spreads out. So, without all the spreading and, you know, so you can see that this is starting to move up a bit. And then this one is starting to rotate around this. And this continues to rotate up. And there you go. But as you can see, it you know, crunches right through there. So let's just go to the shape key. Um, so once I had this, I wanted it to be in a position where this is down here. and that gets pivoted up. So, how to put a shape key in. Go over to all this data. Down to shape keys, hit the plus sign. That gives you the basic shape key, the, the initial shape, and then you gotta hit it again. Get key one. Name it if you want. Okay, go into edit mode. And, boy, the way I did it, it's not going to be the same way. Um, turn on proportional editing and just uh, down the, you know, some around there. All right. Um, here, let's go to points. And uh, put the pivot there and rotate around that. Right. Exaggerating a bit. Back to edge select and oh, turn off proportional and just tweak the individual individual vertices. Oh, take it a bit. Yeah, you know, kind of keep things straightish. Right, and over here, that whoop, I want to watch what I was doing. Um, but anyway, you get the idea. So, button. 
So now you can go to the value over here and you know, see how it changes it. Now, I hit play. Nothing really changed because I'm not activating the shape key with the driver yet. Let's do that. So adding a driver. So right click, go to add driver and manually create later. Okay. Oh. And I'm going to bring up the layer with all my control objects on it. Here's the driver. And just for simplicity, Way. I'm going to move that out of the way in edit mode so that its center stays where it is, but that way it's not right in the middle. Um, so I take this guy, go over to my drivers, open that up, key one. Okay, so object, you hit the little eyedropper here, select your object. And in this case, the the x or the z value of this drive, you know, this object is going to drive shape key. So you z location and always use local space here. That way you can parent the objects all together and move them wherever you need it. It's all going to work. Okay, and then you got to set the variable. So And it's that simple. I did all kinds of things before I got to oh, one to one. Just put the variable in there. So when the z here let's go z point, you know, go up point one. So now if we look at the shape key, the value here is point one. You go z uh, point nine. So now it's all all the way at one. All right, so now this is at one, and you know you can keep going up, but it's not going to change anything. Kind of limited there. Oh, go Z, right? So that affects that key. Back to where it started. All right, so that's setting up that shape key. Okay, let's uh, get rid of that. Oh. oh. So back to our original. So now, again, the shape key was the last thing I did. <laughs> and the first thing I explained. So again, the first thing I did was deal with these pivots. So again, here's the, uh, this one starts moving first. Which one is this? Pin one. And that's connected to the Y location. I move this along the Y. Right. Pivoting that one. Again, it's, uh, it's just a variable. So when this is at point one, this is rotating point one radians. I think it's all in, which makes it completely un in a un un understandable. Sorry. Um, what next? So. That one sets up that one. And this other key here, that's the X location. So if I go in the X direction, it pivots around that one. And if I go in the X and the Z, but, or, or X and Y, but not the Z, right, it's going to move both of them. Okay, so they're all set up. Again, this worked out fairly simply. I was surprised. I didn't have to do a lot of funny math with keeping this, you know, going counter, you know, in an opposite direction or same direction or anything. It just all worked out. Um, also, there's some trouble with using iFind. One object with multiple drivers on, you know, contingencies so that, again, moving in the the X does one thing, moving the Z does another thing. The reason for that is, uh, let's go to top view, right? If I go, go X 0.5, right? That causes that thing to, well, let's go X minus 0.5, okay. 
So that causes that thing to do that, right? So maybe that's the first thing you want to happen, and then you want to go y minus 0.25 or something, right? So now you're at this point. Well, you started at the origin and you moved here. If you just animate that and just say, okay, you know, use a Bezier interpolation, it's not going to go in the order that I just showed. It's not going to go y then x. It's going to go in a line here. Kind of a curve probably this way because it's moving more in the y than the x. And that can throw things off. It can cause, you know, one pivot to turn too much before the other one's in position. And again, it didn't happen here, so thank God. Um, although there is a bit of clipping here, and that might be part of it. You could probably tweak the curves to keep this edge from clipping, although it's really hard to see unless you're looking really close. Um, and, and again, that's, that's the curves. You probably want it to move more Y before it starts moving more X. And then again, you know, when you add the third dimension, right, now it's not going here, here, and then up. It's going, you know, straight line. Well, straightish. But again, it's, uh, you know, maybe it's just a excellently designed model, and I uh, didn't run into any of that stuff. Okay, so, I mean, that's it. Um, how did I figure out the angles? Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, or, you know, the points. I saved that somewhere. Well, eh, I saved it. Oh, I put it in the description on the blend swap site. The actual numbers I used, you know, how, you know, the keyframes, let's see, for this guy. The first keyframe puts it at minus 0.1 x, 0.1 y, and 1 z. So what I had done, worry about like this pivot. Okay. Get that one, so that's the going in the x. So what I did was, with that selected, I'm I hit go X and then it moves it slightly way and then that way and just maybe hold the shift key just to find okay where where is this gotta be? Looking at the wrong thing, I need to look over here. So Okay, so I need it to go up uh, maybe to here and where is that on the X you know that's at minus point one or something you know so I moved it very slightly and watched the numbers up here to see where they were at and then I you know I just you know wrote those values down and went on the next one go on the Y okay nope oh, wrong thing okay so then I figured oh that one has to be at minus point one other things that you know blah 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 so I just moved them very slowly to find out what distance it was traveling to get that angle rather than trying to do the math to figure out what's the uh, ratio between you know linear distance and radio radian angle and all that crap um, so you know just hunt and pack or trial by error Okay, uh, what else? Um, I think that's about it. That, and again, oh, well, you know, I put the first, the first key at 121, and the second one at 240, and it was kind of random, and it seemed to work out, but, you know, you, you can go here in the dope sheet and, uh, you know, select the keys. <coughs> Excuse me, and move them to you know make them pop or take longer or whatever. Oh, I guess that's it. And
And there we go. Well, hope that helped exp understand how to work this. Thanks for watching.